Welcome everybody to the How to Write a Research Question Library Workshop. Today, we're gonna be going over research questions versus thesis statements, how to create a research strategy, and how to use your question to the best of your advantage. My name is Carissa Powell. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the student success librarian, and I work with a lot of first year composition students you can email me about anything library related. My email is carissa at utk.edu. My name is Amber Sewell. I also use she, her pronouns. I'm the teaching and learning librarian, which includes being the liaison to first year programs. So FYS 101, transition 201, that kind of thing. Um, my email address is also up here. Please feel free to ask any questions you've got. Um, it is asewell1 at utk.edu. So again, a little bit of what we're doing today is we're gonna spend some time going over what is a research question versus what is a thesis statement and how to use both of those to the best of your ability when you're starting a research project. So again, for anyone who hasn't seen, I'm putting the Padlet link in chat. And thank you so much for folks who have commented, looking through some of the struggles. I see struggles with that tension between narrowing down too much versus like being too broad, like that fine balance between the two. Um, I see someone thinking about how to pick a good topic, which would lead to a good research question. Like maybe that just that topic selection is a sticky place. Um, someone talking about that in-depth exploration that isn't too overwhelming, that's very real. Um, we'll definitely be talking about a lot of these and I appreciate everyone who shared some of their research struggles. Definitely, if we don't answer a specific thing you were hoping to get out of this workshop, we'll be here for 30 minutes afterwards to answer anything more in depth. You guys have some really cool topics you're looking into, so please feel free to stay and chat with us after. So to get started, I thought it would be helpful to st talk about what is a research question. And for me, the best way to explain what it is, is to put it opposite a thesis statement. So I don't know about you guys, um, but when I was taught how to write a paper, I was told you write a thesis statement. So essentially you pick a point that you're gonna argue in your paper, and then you had to go out and find sources that agreed with it and then like one or two opposing ones but that was how you started your research process you picked a thesis statement like evil dragons are red and good dragons are blue if i'm taking our myths and monsters class um so this is the thesis statement and i would go out and i would try to find sources um, that explicitly agreed with me um and then a couple that disagreed so i could prove why i was right and so this could be problematic for a couple of reasons. Um, one is kind of like I mentioned that pressure that you have to find somebody who agrees with exactly what you say. Um, this is a common problem that I run into helping students when they're talking about a thesis statement is I need a source that says exactly what I said. Um, how do I find it? And this can lead to two things. Either you tried to research something you're interested in, but you can't find any sources that agree with you. And so you get really frustrated. You feel like maybe you shouldn't be writing a research paper about this if nobody else is saying it, which isn't fun. Um, or you decide to avoid that altogether and think, well, I'm just gonna pick an easy topic. Like I know tons of people are saying why Disney princesses are bad for little girls. I know I can find sources. My teacher says they've heard this story, read this paper 50 times, but you know what? It's gonna be less stressful. Um, and then the research process isn't, isn't fun. Um, I firmly believe that research is way easier when you're interested in what you're reading. And so going into a research project with a thesis statement can be really confining because you feel like you're working within these narrow parameters. And this is where the research question really makes a big difference, I think. Um, instead of going into a research paper looking for your sources, saying, I just need somebody that says this, and then somebody who disagrees, so I can put that in my paper, 
you go in asking a question that you don't know the answer to necessarily. So if I'm looking at the same assignment and I still want to research dragons because dragons are awesome, um, maybe I'm going to ask what are the physical attributes given to dragons based on their moral alignment, aka whether they're good or bad. So I could still address, you know, are good dragons often blue and bad dragons are like red or black, um, but there's a lot more options out there too. I might find out that there's an aspect of dragonhood that I'd never considered before. So I'm exploring new sources because I don't know the answer to the question. I've got Toothless down here because another like physical difference that I've noticed in dragons is like good dragons get round eyes or in Toothless's case they're squarish um, but bad dragons have slitted pupils like when Toothless is being intimidating his eyes go a little narrow. Um, basically there are a lot of possible answers to a research question which means you're going to have a lot more sources. Um, it can seem daunting especially because you might run into a couple of people said they're worried about the scope of their question so I might start with this research question and realize this is way too much I need to like narrow in on somewhere specific but at least this way I'm going to get tons of more sources and this is actually a more natural research process when we are researching how do students learn best or how how do we find a vaccine for COVID? We don't know the answers. And so we're having to go through and find existing sources out there to make a new argument or to make a new finding. And so this is what a research question does for writing your paper. So in terms of thinking about additionally why you might want to do a research question over a thesis statement, one of the benefits is that it really broadens the type of things you're looking for, whether that's the type of source or a particular source. I really visualized it as these two pictures of kind of on the left, you have a thesis statement where it's a very specific thing you're trying to prove. And on the right, you have this wide open field you are looking for the answer to the question and the answer could be anything. So it really kind of broadens what you'll be looking for and it kind of gives you a little bit more space to do some searching. I also think it's easier to sometimes get frustrated if you're doing a thesis statement and you're trying to find one specific thing and sometimes that thing has not been published yet and sometimes that one thing is also not true whereas a question will lead you kind of on a on an adventure so one of the other advantages is that it kind of just takes you where you're going to go. And so if you allow the research question to be the guiding force of a research project or a process or a paper, you might feel like this, hopefully. There's probably also going to be a lot of other feelings of frustration and other things. But hopefully, this is how you might feel when you turn your paper in. The last advantage that we wanted to share today, there's lots of advantages, but the, the three we're sharing is that it can also be easier to incorporate that research into your writing process. So another place where we see a lot of frustration from students is maybe they've written their whole paper, they're trying to find one specific quote to incorporate into their paper. Um, whereas if you kind of flip that research model around, if you allow the research question to, to guide your, re your writing process, it can be a little easier to find quotes as you go along and incorporate those instead of the reverse where you're trying to find a quote at the very last minute. So hopefully we've kind of convinced you to give research questions a try. Um, and so what does that process look like once you've decided that's how you want to approach your next assignment? Um, first is brainstorming, um, which is just like a vague way to say you're trying to come up with ideas for your research. And this looks different for everybody. Um, I would sit down with the assignment and see if anything immediately came to mind I was excited about, or maybe look over examples. 
Um, I love a whiteboard, so I'd probably be like writing random phrases and words that were related to each other on the whiteboard until I came up with something and I'm like, yeah, I feel good. Like I'm ready to kind of dive in and see what's out there. And so naturally from the brainstorming, I'm going to have come up with some keywords um, and you're really going to want to use those to build your research questions. So what are the things that you're most interested in? What are most key to your research? Um, and next week we'll talk about it a little bit more, but we'll go into how to then use those keywords. So one of the things that you can do once you've come up with your research question, again, we're just doing an overview. This, this takes a lot of time. Amber and I wanted to share some reflective questions that we use as we're about to embark on searching in a database. All of this is done before you might even jump into OneSearch or a database. So the first reflective question to think about is, what types of sources are you looking for? I know some folks here might be looking for primary sources for an archival assignment. Maybe you're looking for a secondary source. And within each of those categories, you can do even more brainstorming. Um, so I know someone here, it sounds like that they're working on a topic of the legitimacy of social media as an outlet for disenfranchised voices, which I'm really intrigued by. And so maybe you know that you're gonna look for a peer reviewed journal article for that legitimacy aspect that you're looking for. Whereas maybe someone else is looking for, it sounds like someone's doing the ethics of gene editing. And so basically use your topics to kind of brainstorm what you might want to find. And then we also want you to think through what are you expecting to find? Like maybe you do your first search and discover that disenfranchised voices is not leading you to the results you wanna see. And maybe you do a little bit more brainstorming about other keywords, which again, like Amber said, we'll be going over more in depth at another workshop. Another question we would welcome you to think through is, what will be most helpful. So maybe you know going into your search that you're really wanting X, Y, Z. And if you're not seeing that, to take some time to kind of think through some other keywords, some other synonyms. Um, and then I think, I'm not sure if this is the last question or not, it might be. Um, to kind of think through what might be a barrier. So as you find yourself maybe hitting a wall, like maybe reflecting on what that might be before you get there. I know a couple folks have already mentioned some potential barriers in their struggles. Um, so someone was talking about wanting to find something they're interested in. Someone mentioned um, finding a topic that is engaging. And so maybe thinking through some of the barriers of um, what makes something unengaging? Like, how can I make sure that this will be engaging? So these are just a few things to think through. Again, this is something that I personally try to do before I start on a research project. This can be really simple as opening a physical notebook, opening a Google Doc, and kind of just brain dumping before you get into a database. So as much as we would love the idea that research is like fun and easy, it isn't always. Um, even if the topic is fun, you might still hit a roadblock. Um, so we have a couple of resources for you if you do start doing research and then you just get stuck. Um, we have a link here to a workshop we did last semester um, called What Do You Do When You Hit a Research Rut? How to Get Unstuck. Um, and so you can go watch that and it's got a lot of really good strategies for how to reapproach your research question, how to change where you're looking um, for sources. And of course, you can always come to us. So Chris and I gave you our emails at the beginning of 
the presentation, but we also have research assistance that's offered at the library. Um, you can chat in with us. It is on almost every page of the library's website, even within the databases. Um, so you'll see that little box. You can type your question in there and a real person will answer and help you out. Um, you can also email in with us. Um, and if it's something where you really feel like you just need to sit down and talk with somebody to work out the problem, we do have Zoom research consultations. So you can book an appointment with a librarian where you can sit down and really kind of get into the nitty gritty of how to get unstuck. So that is about to conclude the formal portion of today's workshop. We would love to hear from you at tiny.utk.edu forward slash research question. If you are here needing proof of attendance, this is also the survey you will fill out to get that proof of attendance. But we'd also love to hear what stuck out to you, things that are still confusing. And we would also love for you to join us next week on how to navigate subject specific databases. And we'll be going over keywords as well. So if that is of interest to you, please join us next week. You can register on the library's website. All right, thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna go ahead and end the recording and then we would love to hear questions, uh, things you're struggling with, things that are sticking points, anything like that. You can hop on and chat.